Hey guys, this is Rough Rooster Knife Sharpening again. I was going to post a video tonight on reprofiling. I was going to do my Battle Horse Comanche. I'll show you real quick. This little Battle Horse Comanche is a slick rig. That's my LT. What did I do with it? Here it is. Sorry, guys. This one right here is flat ground. I love this knife. But uh, I talked to Ashley Coppins, and apparently they didn't make very many flat ground ones. You can find all kinds of the, I think they're saber ground ones. But anyway, that's a slick little blade. You guys ought to check out Battle Horse if you don't know anything about them. Anyway, what I'm doing tonight, I'm going to talk about diamond stones, ceramics, and my Arkansas stones. There is a lot of people that do not like Arkansas stones, and in my opinion, because they're too impatient. They're all worried about how quick they cut and everything, which sometimes quickness is better, but my Arkansas's produce very high quality edges. They do take more time, but, and they're also heirlooms too, but um, you gotta take care of them and keep them flat with natural stones or water stones, I don't know how people have a dish stone and think they can get a perfect edge. It's not possible. There's a lot of people that will disagree with that, but that's just common sense. If you have a dish stone and you got to work it, you're going to create a real, real big wide convex edge. I don't do that. I create, try to create the best flat edge I can, but I freehand so you're going to have somewhat of a convex. Anyway, let's talk about some stones. First off, I'm going to go through my diamond stones that I have. You guys seen those on my previous video. I did have the DMT EE8, which is extra, extra fine. And there is no difference between the extra fine and the extra, extra fine. It's just, I think it's a sales gimmick. I'm not talking crap about DMT, it's just... The, those two, the two stones, the DMT Extra extra Fine and the Spyderco Ceramic are supposed to be about the same thing. I sold the DE88 or DEE8 and kept the ceramic. But this is a 3x8 DMT, of course. Uh, 320 grit. This is my first stone if I'm roof reprofiling which I reprofile just about everything I don't like any factory edge at all um, this one is 11 and a half inch by two it is my DMT fine this is probably my most used diamond plate this is a great stone at 600 grit um, I'm kind of going through these because most y'all know what they are this one is the extra fine it's 1200 grit this thing right here gives a wonderful toothy edge very 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 sharp edge um, and I really like this big 10 by three and a half or four inch um, as opposed to the 11's it's just you got more surface area if you work on chisels or real wide blades or big bevels or if you have like a SE Hungless I've got one they this is perfect for it This is a little Dan's Translucent Arkansas. It's a little pocket stone, um, but these yield some of the best edges there is. Um, you can't really tell the grit of an Arkansas stone or any natural stone because they're specific weight by gravity. Um, if you find an old nasty oily stone at the flea market and you think it's an Arkansas stone, if you can confirm it's a natural stone, it's probably an Arkansas stone. You don't see many um, natural Japanese stones at Walmart or Walmart at uh, the flea markets. But you you can tell by weight. Like this one right here is very heavy for its size, so that means the particles are denser, which are closer together, which means a finer grit. Um, 
I'm going to turn my light away from here and I'm going to show you guys why it is called a translucent. This light is really bright. It is completely translucent. It's opaque white. I would put this stone in the grit rating. About 8,000 grit. It's that fine. This is a Washita. This is the coarsest Arkansas stone that uh, Mother Nature made. Um, it's about 400 grit. Some of them a little coarser than that. This one is very, very light, a lot lighter than this one, even though this stone right here is smaller than this one. It's a little thicker, but this one is a lot lighter. There again, I said specific gravity and density. This one is less dense, which means it's going to be coarser. Um, the particles are farther apart, and it's like... It's, it's a lower grit because the, the particles aren't crammed together so tightly, if that makes sense. I got twisted up there for a minute. But that is what they used to reprofile on back in the day. That's also a good little pocket stone. I keep one of those with my fillet knife because um, you really don't want a polished edge filleting fish. I don't know if you guys have ever filleted, but you want a little bit of a coarser edge, and that's just a great little stone. This one is a soft Arkansas. And they say that you can't grade Arkansas by color. I agree to a certain extent, but I disagree. This, anybody that has ever seen one of these knows this is just a general purpose Arkansas, but it is my favorite type of Arkansas stone. It, it's about, depending on what you get and how you lap it, and I will get into that later, lapping and resurfacing, uh, very interesting. And de-oiling stones. I do not use oil on anything that I have. It's all Dawn and Water. But this is another just general purpose stone. But it's six by one and a half. This thing puts a great edge on like 1095 carbon. Um, again, six, eight hundred grit. This is another Washita. And guys, if you find a Washita, if you're even into Arkansas's, pick it up. Because they are really hard to find. I don't even think the quarries cut them much anymore because it's just so hard to find. But um, you can tell because they're they're white. This is, I want to say this is a lily white Washita. If I'm wrong, guys, correct me. But it's not purely white, obviously. But you can always tell by this color pattern. Um, I can because I've never seen another Arkansas stone like that but it's got purples and reds and pinks and sometimes blues, blacks, grays all on the same stone and this one by its size it's really not that heavy there again because it's it's very coarse and always my grandmother made these for me always keep your stones in something to protect them this right here is the rarest of the rare Arkansas stones and I am lucky that I have two of them. This is a black translucent. This is a very pretty stone. See the stripes here? Um, this thing, I have lapped it and yeah, you can see that glaze that is how fine that I have lapped this stone. This right here, I would put somewhere in the 10 to 15,000 grit range. Um, it is the ultimate finishing Arkansas. It will yield some of the finest edges available, available that you can that you can produce yourself. But again, I'm going to show you. It doesn't transmit as good as everything else, but. You can kind of see it going through the side there just a little. It's very hard to see over the tablet. But what happened with this stone is there's a black Arkansas 
and there is a translucent Arkansas. And those two veins merge together over millions and millions of years in heat and pressure and produce this. It's called a blue-black Arkansas or a uh, black translucent. They're called different things. That's the one I got that from RH Prada. This one was from Norton. I uh, modified this box from an old stone to put it in. This thing right here is the finest Arkansas stone I have. You can also see where this one's glazed, where I've lapped it very fine. You can see my fingers in it. But again same grit rating as the other one um, this is a Morton it does say you can barely see it Morton oil stone HB6 HB stands for hard bench stone 6 means 6 inches long and this is about 2 inches wide but again this is a blue black translucent this one being so thick it does not um, let light penetrate it as well but this corner right here is pure white translucent I think that's picking that up but you can see I can move back and it kind of transmits there a little bit but it's so thick that it just doesn't let light go through as well but these things right here, if you see one and you're getting into them, get it. And they are really high. Really, really high. This thing right here is, is pretty rare also. I believe this is classified as maybe a surgical black it's between a black and translucent it's like a smoky gray but this thing penetrates light perfectly all over it it is completely translucent but I think it is called a surgical black this you've got to I've lapped this one this thing was a son of a gun to lap it took off and on three or four nights working on it here and there but uh, I finished it with 2,000 wet wet dry sandpaper the automotive stuff you can see how glazed that is and a lot of people say say glazed stones are bad they're not ignore that I will prove to you in the upcoming videos they're not and this thing you can see all the little spots. You can look in this stone and see that it's down in there. That's how well that your, your eyes just kind of penetrate it. But these little lines that you see through here and this right here, that is a fracture. But that, it, I mean, I, I actually dropped this stone in the sink and it did not break, thank God. But you just can't find a stone this quality this large because these little occlusions. I think they're called clusions or fissures like this. When they cut it with the saws, it is so hard that some of them just break or shatter. And finding one of this size is kind of hard to find. And when you do find them, they're insanely high. But I'm going to lean more towards smoky gray translucent. Translucents have a lot of different colors. You can find them very rarely, but sometimes in pink. Uh, there's black translucents that I just showed you, or blue, black, Arkansas, whichever you prefer to call them. Um, and then the smoky gray one. I've seen some very odd ones. And I've gotten rid of a lot of stones over the years. But let's see. This one right here, I call a primitive cut. And I have yet to see another stone like it. The reason I call it a primitive cut is because they just hacked it right off the side of the stone that they blasted out. You can see the bottom, it's just, they're, you can't use that to sharpen on. But this side you can. I don't know if you can tell, but it, it's glazed too. But this is an opaque white translucent. I got this um, 
from a guy in Saudi Arabia, actually. Done some trading and uh, got this. But it is a translucent Arkansas. My friend, a friend of mine, Tommy, at Smoky Mountain Knife Works up in Sevierville, which I'm about two hours away from, um, had this for a while, and he wrote that on there. Kind of looks like a chicken got a hold of a permanent marker, doesn't it? I'm just joking, Tommy, if you see this video. <laughs> I have yet to see another opaque white translucent other than that pocket stone that I have. And you can see how it kind of turns brown right there. That's from the brown on that side. But it transmits light perfectly. Oh, I was also going to say about this one. A lot of these have a lot different variations in grit. You just have to use them to find out uh, and your feedback like I was talking about on my first sharpening video. This one right here is actually coarser than this one. This one right here, you can kind of feel a little grit to it. Not much at all, but this one right here is like glass. And uh, with the Dawn and Water that I use, this will produce a mirror edge, definitely. I have done it on D2. I have done it on M4. I've done it on M390. I've done it on Sleppner steel, which Lion still uses. I don't know who else uses that, even if they do. I've done it on 01 tool steel, and it will really produce nice mirror finishes on carbon steels because they're softer, obviously. And this is my favorite stone combination. I use this one more than anything. This is not a pinnacle stone. Um, this is just a good box um, that I had. This is a black Arkansas. This is also glazed. Um, the black Arkansas, this one is really, really, really fine. Um, this is one of the finest finishing stones that you can buy next to these. This particular stone come from Dan's Wet Stones. They cut some great, great stones. If you're looking to uh, get a good set of Arkansas stones look at Dan's wet stones they're a little bit expensive I didn't buy this one from them I actually traded for it at the 127 yard sale but this side you can kind of see that's glazed too but this is another type of soft soft Arkansas um, six eight hundred grit the way I've got it lapped right now I'd say about 800 grit this side right here um, it's one of the finer finishers that I have this is this would be the next to last one that I would use I would say this one um, seven thousand five hundred eight thousand grit maybe a little finer but I always keep my better ones in wooden boxes because God forbid if you drop them or something they're usually fine sometimes you break them I've done that and almost makes you sick. This is a coarse um, silicon carbide. Um, if you're looking to really hog some metal off, this is not a natural stone. I'm just throwing it in there. But if you're really looking to hog some metal off without diamonds, this is it right here. Um, I use this one a lot. Um, to flatten other stones, or my, I've got a couple of water stones. I'm not real fond of them, but um, I'll get to that here in a minute. I use an 800 grit King water stone to reprofile my Scandi grinds. But this one right here, it's a uh, and is pretty coarse. I would say 220 grit, 300 grit. This side is a um, fine India and this has been de-oiled that is not oil on it that's metal stains or this thing probably sat in a shop at a or a machine shop for years or something like that but I soaked that thing in degreaser and boiling water for several hours and it pulled it out and again I'll explain how to do all that later
This is the King Ice Bear Waterstone that I use to reprofile my Scandi grinds. Um, these things, you do have to let them soak in water. You'll see a bunch of bubbles coming up. Um, and soak them until they uh, stop bubbling. Or try to, if you're impatient, like me sometimes, <laughs> waiting for them. That's one reason I don't use these much. But what, what I do like about water stones is when you cut they don't get clogged. It, it just removes um, abrasive and brings more to the surface. So that is a good advantage of these things. These right here, when you get done with them, I take them straight to the kitchen sink. My wife gets mad at me sometimes, but use an old stiff nylon brush and dawn and scrub the hell out of them. You got to keep them things clean. Um, they would A lot of people would use oil on them way back in the day and it made a mess and it just clogged the pores of the stone up and it just essentially ruined several generations of good Arkansas stones. I'm not going to fool with that right now. But, uh, guys, I hope that you guys got some good information out of this. I wanted to show you guys what I use. Um, I've pretty much narrowed down what that I will and won't use. I've got rid of a lot of stuff, but, um, this is my main Ar or Arkansas stone and diamonds setup, and you guys know what the ultra fine ceramic is. Also, I don't have to go over that one. But uh, if you're looking for a a fine ultra fine ceramic, this is it. This will produce a pretty good mirror edge. But again, I hope you guys got some good information out of this. If you guys got any questions or comments. Um, Please post them below, ask. I'll do my best to get back with you. Um, but you guys get you some Arkansas stones and try them out. They they will not reprofile other than if you have a medium or that Washita that I was talking about. Washita, Washita, however you want to call it. Um, but these are strictly finishers. The ones like this and the black Arkansas and the smoky gray one that I showed you, that's all they're good for. Don't try to re reprofile with one because you'll get in the comments and cuss me because <laughs> they're so fine and they cut very slow but they will yield some of the best edges that you've ever seen and you will enjoy using them uh, again it does take patience but when they're heirlooms too you know you can pass these down to your children your great grandchildren you know go on down the line and all they do is go up in value um, that stone right there uh, if I was to sell it maybe $200. You just don't find stuff like that. But guys, y'all have a good evening. Please leave your comments below. If you like the video, please, please press the thumbs up. Subscribe. I would appreciate it. Take her easy.